What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Steve Nasantowski here of Maize and Brew, and it's time for Michigan spring football, right? Michigan just had their spring football game this past Saturday, and I'm creating this video to kind of lay the blueprint out of how to process any offseason news, right? So I'm going to provide four steps here that I think will make your offseason as a Michigan fan a bit more bearable. Again, over the past few years, I feel like Michigan fans as a whole have been down on the program, understandably so, especially after the 2020 performance, right? So it's created kind of this distaste in offseason coverage in general. You know, Michigan decided no one's going to watch a spring game this year, right? It could be strictly competitive advantage with a new defensive staff in place. Not putting that on film could give Michigan a competitive advantage, but it could also be in reaction to the kind of negative fan reaction, the overall sour demeanor that a lot of Michigan fans have today, right? So it's likely a bit of both, right? So a select few Michigan fans actually want to absorb Michigan football news this spring. For those of you who do, this guide uh, should help you. And for those many of which are probably in the just beat Ohio uh, state of mind, uh, I hope this roadmap can make things a little bit more bearable for you. Okay, so let's move right into number one. Take everything with a grain of salt. Okay, everything you hear, take it with a grain of salt. Remember that it's Michigan against Michigan here, right? So for an example, spring game tidbits, it appears that Andrew Anthony, true freshman uh, wide receiver, looked really good, right? Had multiple uh, reports out that he was performing really well in the spring game. You could take that multiple ways, okay? Number one, true freshman is really good, right? Exceeding expectations at that position already. That could be the positive outlook. Number two, our secondary is doomed. A true freshman is crushing them, right? That's the negative viewpoint, which is true. Who knows, right? Maybe a bit, little bit of both because we're missing the context here. And I'll keep mentioning context. That's everything when it comes to appropriately judging these guys throughout the offseason and appropriately judging the value in these spring reports, okay? So another example, if an offensive lineman is performing really well, right? Say there's a report coming out about Carson Barnhart or some other offensive lineman consistently winning reps, X, Y, and Z, whatever. Let's assign a rating to that, okay? I'm gonna call this the meaningful rating, all right? Where no, a one on this scale is completely useless and a 10 is extremely reliable. This can be treated as fact, okay? Now, the added context to this statement, right, that, that this offensive lineman is performing really well. The added context here, let's say he was consistently going up against Aiden Hutchinson, okay? This is a proven high-level contributor at defensive end, should compete for all conference awards this year. So the meaningful rating with that added context probably pushes that close to a 9 or a 10, right? With that proven commodity, that gives a lot more weight to that statement, okay? Now, let's say instead of Aiden Hutchinson, it was against a true freshman or maybe a walk-on or something like that, right? That meaningful rating drops all the way down probably to a two or three, right? You like to see this offensive lineman handling that, but if it's a true freshman instead of Aiden Hutchinson, that carries a lot less weight. So we lack the context about that information. And without that context, uh, we cannot give the, the premise an appropriate meaningful rating. So who knows what that report actually means without that context provided, right? And that's most news that we'll hear this off season, okay? Number two, people will cling to the tiniest little tidbit of information available, okay? So there's just a, a lack of available news in general, especially with Michigan, how they approach the spring and the tidbits we actually receive, right? So giving you an example, there was a play of practice where J.J. McCarthy hits a deep pass completion, right? This is one play <laughs> with some reps with some second and third stringers in there. And people had Twitter threads, diagrams, articles written all about this one play, right? I mean, that exists. I'll show it on the screen here. On one hand, it's it's amazing the amount of effort that people cover this one individual play. On another hand, that's a bit of an overreaction, right? People are trying to get as much information out of this one little tidbit as they can. So because of that lack of information, that sort of thing will get more coverage than you would expect, right? Come fall camp, there's gonna be a lot more information out there. You're not gonna see people going super in depth on a single play like that. So it's just supply and demand, right? If there's a lack of supply, you're going to get a disproportionate amount of coverage on that supply and that's what you're gonna see. So <laughs> number three here, sometimes omissions tell you more than the news itself. What I mean by that is say a position coach is asked at a certain position who's contributing here and there and some names are mentioned, right? There's valuable to be gained on a list of players maybe not called as a part of those interviews from the media, okay? So for an example, g Green listed who was running with the ones or the starters in the secondary. Names were the following, DJ Turner, Vincent Gray, Dax Hill, RJ Moten, Brad Hawkins, 
And uh, what do we learn from that list, right? Okay, DJ Turner, that's a guy who we've wanted to break through kind of in the secondary. Good to see his name. So maybe he's challenging a spot at the second cornerback position with Vincent Gray. Uh, RJ Moten, a guy we haven't really seen too much. Maybe he's a little more ahead of schedule, flashing some things, right? But the lack of names there could be more telling than the inclusion of the certain names, right? Makari Page, a guy we saw with significant time last year, he's omitted from that once. Does that mean maybe R.J. Moten passed him? Who knows, right? Another one, Andre Selden appears to be a guy maybe not used in a traditional setting, maybe more of a nickel corner situation with him because he's not mentioned as a part of the cornerbacks uh, that Jimon Green had in that list. So again, back to point one with both of those things, both of those names I just said, take it with a grain of salt, right? G. McGreen could have simply mistakenly left those guys out of those lists without any meaning, just a mistake, right? So it's more of something just to keep in back of your head where it's like, okay, lack of these names, keep that in mind later on. And the more maybe those names aren't mentioned or something in the future, have a little bit more weight moving on. So it has to be iterative, kind of keep something to keep in the back of your head. And finally, number four, overreactions. All right, there'll be many of them, okay? And this is both people saying, Michigan is going to be Alabama. Michigan's the best. Like everything's looking great. And you're also going to have people saying like, fire everyone. The world is burning. The offense is behind the defense and that's terrible. Offense returns so much. Defense is brand new. How can the defense be leading? And you'll just get into a rabbit hole of negativity, right? You're going to have both of those. And you can't avoid that or rival fans jumping on a single positive report as, well, the hype train is moving, right? So you're going to have that. I'll show this like snippet of a uh, of a tweet here i don't i won't give away the name because that's what people want right it's the slowest time of the year no information or very little information getting out there being inflammatory or being exaggerated is what gets attention from people during this slow news cycle being reasonable or measured usually won't right so whether it's being serious and being serious on one side of the spectrum or the other or you're just leaning into it right being purposefully obtuse that's it's what's going to be out there because again that's what gets clicks that's what gets attention and so on and so forth so it's part of spring football right it's something to expect and if you're if you have awareness of that and, and keeping that in the back of your mind of what to expect it's going to be a little bit more bearable a little bit easier to digest that and understand where it's coming from and why the reactions are what they are okay that's all i got for you guys for this one nothing i said here uh, was new or different. This has been the case for multiple years here, but I hope it provided some perspective, gave you some tools to digest that information, right? Just to process it, give yourself an extra breath. Whew, how do I deal with this? Okay. So um, I think awareness of all of this makes it easier to navigate throughout the off season. So tons more content to come. I'll be posting a video of kind of my off season plans and what kind of content to expect from this channel moving forward. So again, subscribing is the best way to see that content out there on the community tab moving forward. But beyond that, guys, thank you for watching this video. Stay safe out there. Stay tuned. And uh, as always, go blue.